On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Nish and I are going to talk about how you can take an existing WPF line of business app and mobilize it using Xamarin. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Nish Anil. Hey, Nish. Hey, Robert. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having All me. All the way from Bangalore. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Lovely city. <laughs> Love so, traffic. <laughs> Nish is uh, a PM in the Xamarin team. Yes. And uh, he wrote a, a blog post, a Visual Studio blog post, a uh, little short uh, while ago, uh, where you took an existing WPF app and yep. you mobilized it. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, especially since the app you used right. uh, would be familiar to longtime viewers of the show because right. it's an expenses app that I had used. Um, we did a, a few shows on how to cloud enable an existing mm -hmm. WPF app. Yeah. And this is the app we used. Yeah, I realized that was a shortcut to get to your show. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so when I was looking for, um, you know, I was looking for a blog post where I can convert a WPF app mm -hmm. into a mobile app. Uh, well, because there's a lot of .NET code out there, legacy yep. codes. A lot of people don't realize that they are all ready for, uh, you know, mobile development today. Right? We can directly port that code to mobile. So I was looking for a fairly simple app. Uh, when I say simple, uh, I'm also talking about. Uh, it's not the UI which is simple, but then it's 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 written in such a way that it is easily portable. Yes. Like uh, it's following some patterns like MVC, MVVM, basically separation of concerns. Right. So WPF was my best bet because it would have followed MVVM, and you could technically use the VM as well mm -hmm. into uh, Xamarin Forms app yep. these days, right? So. And actually, the app originally was written with that intention. Right. <laughs> we we said. When we build this app, we need to <coughs> architect it mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. if somebody came along yep. and wrote additional front ends, whether it yep. was Windows 8 at the time or mm -hmm. UWP or Xamarin, right. that uh, would be easy to do. Right. So yeah, so I picked that up, and uh, uh, it was quite easy in a way to port it, mm -hmm. but there were complexities involved as well. So I will, um, I'll explain that as we hit that. Okay. Uh, so the app is WPF, mm -hmm. it talks to a WCF service, yeah. talks to SQL Server, mm -hmm. um, all locally. Yeah. Of course, the SQL Server would in real life live on a server somewhere, and right. that's with the WCF service. Yeah. Um, and then what we did in the cloud enabling is we took the data from SQL Server and moved mm -hmm. it to SQL Azure. Yep. Then we took the WCF service and published it mm -hmm. to Azure and then left the WPF app alone. Yep. It's talking to WCF in the cloud, talking to data in the cloud. Yep. So then the idea is that <coughs> you could have any client, yep. like a Xamarin client, yeah. talk to that same thing. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, there's one thing that I changed in the back end. Mm -hmm. um, the I'll tell you the reason why I did that as well. Technically, you can take your Xamarin Forms app or Xamarin app, uh, connect to a WCF backend, which is fine. Right. Uh, but when, when we are talking about mobile apps, we are also talking about a very disconnected scenarios, yes. right? Uh, we may be offline. People are doing the transaction. You are going on, you know, offline. And thanks. Um, so when I looked at it, your um, backend was fairly simple as well. So I could reuse that backend code too mm -hmm. to build the Azure mobile apps. Right. Uh, so I put it to Azure mobile apps first. Uh, the backend. Cool. Yeah. It was very straightforward because you had the data architecture. Uh, so I just have to expose our endpoint and then enable uh, the offline sync for that. Okay. Right. Cool. So I did that first. And then I wrote the WPF app connecting to the mobile apps uh, using the Azure client SDKs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was fairly simple. Excellent. Yeah. So, so talk us through uh, what you did, what <laughs> you ran into, what advice you'd have for people trying to do this. How, how does this yeah. all work? Yeah, the, the first thing that I want to tell is every app is different, so the approach should be the same. Uh, okay. The complexity may be different. And also, when you're porting the app, the first thing, yeah, you are getting the benefit of uh, reusing the code. But also, you have to give importance to the mobile platforms, mm -hmm. right? You need to see how you can embrace the platform features, not just reuse the code. Sometimes right. um, the code is great for reuse. Um, I'll tell you an example in WPF. Uh, we have this uh, huge real estate, right? So you have buttons here. You change combo box somewhere. Uh, there's uh, title bar changing. There's status bar changing. There's so many things happening yeah. within the large real estate. Uh, when we're talking about mobile apps, we don't have so much real estate. We're talking about four inch to six inch phones people are using uh, with a very less attention span. So you mm -hmm. want to be very creative in how you want to present the view to the user and break it down. So that means some of your code uh, are reusable, but they need to be broken down in such a way that you know it is ready for mobile. Right. right. You want um, to write a mobile app that looks like yeah. a mobile app. It doesn't Absolutely. look like something that you ported to run on yeah. a device. Yeah. Which <laughs> I mean, that's 
a good first step, right. but you're going to wind up with an app that doesn't really look like it right. belongs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then if people have to use it, fine, you can get away with it, but you really yeah. should write an app that not only takes advantage of the platform, mm -hmm. whether it's iOS or Android mm -hmm. or uh, Win 10, but also write an app that looks like yeah. other apps, other and apps. behaves like yeah. other apps, so that Absolutely. people, A, know how to use it, and B, yeah. are immediately comfortable with it. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. That's right. Um, so, uh, do we go ahead uh, explain this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the uh, awesome WP of app. Fairly simple, but it has its own complexity mm -hmm. uh, within that. So, we have this. Um, uh, it's a simple expenses app where, you, when, as and when you incur charges, you create a new um, charge, uh, put in your build amount, transaction amount, uh, and then go ahead and uh, save that, right? Mm -hmm. So once, uh, when you are time to submit your report, uh, you go to the reports and then create a new report, add those expenses that you want to do, uh, add here, right? So you yep. have the create new, uh, oh yeah. So you have, uh, um, yeah, you could, you could actually get the associate charges right. when I add it there, and then, um, you know, uh, save it and then submit it to the your manager right yep. to, for the reimbursements. So <clears throat> this is fairly simple. Now, uh, first thing what I did uh, to port this app is to make it mobile. So let me show you the app that uh, that was uh, built finally. Okay. Yeah. So then we can go and talk about uh, the other things. So <clears throat> so your app didn't have the authentication mechanism. Uh, in the WP, uh, WPO space, which I was looking at. Um, so we could now, with Azure Mobile Apps, you could technically go and implement Azure AD okay. uh, directly because yep. there is mobile apps done. Um, right. So uh, for this demo, I haven't implemented that, so I'm just going to skip that. Okay. Right. Um, so <clears throat> once we go into the um, Expenses app, you will see a very similar UI that uh, you have seen there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in the sense that you will have similar tab and things, but the way it is placed is very different. So you can see that. Uh, so these are my charges right now. So if I want to go ahead and create a new charge, I could just go and create uh, a new one. So you have the uh, same old uh, stuffs, right? Mm -hmm. So you pick up the category. Um, if you're booking a taxi or a meal, um, let me just go do that, right? So I'll just say Uber. Um, build is 20. There's a transaction amount. Oops, 20. And some notes there. So uh, I came in from Bellevue t this morning, so I'll just use that. To Redmond. And then just go click Save, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what it's doing right now is it's actually connecting to the Azure Mobile Apps backend. And if you go back uh, into the backend, you can actually refresh this page and you will see this uh, connection uh, updated here, like okay. the data updated here. Uh, so, you know, <coughs> if there was no internet connection, it would still be there and it, it wouldn't have synced. So that is the advantage that you can make use of when you go with mobile apps. So if I open an iOS app or a Windows app, which mm -hmm. obviously comes from Xamarin Forms, um, you could see the same data reflecting there. So technically, you're building all the three platforms uh, in a single chart. Right, because the mobile apps have, have really good support for offline sync using yeah. SQLite on the device. On the correct? device, right. yes, yes, right. So yeah, then then there's like you can go to the reports, you can add this report. Um, um, so if I want to create a new report, I can just go ahead and just create the report, add the expenses. You can see the differences between the UI that we had mm -hmm. in the WPF. As, and the mobile. Um, so the advantage of now moving to mobile is maybe I don't have to really key in the charges, right? I could literally scan the bill, right. and we can use the cognitive services to you know, do the, uh, convert the image into the text, mm -hmm. and then create sure. the charge for it. So yep. it makes uh, life so simple. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, what I did so far. Okay. Okay. Um, so now let's look at the code uh, real quick. Uh, what how, how did I do this? Well, I could technically, uh, let me uh, just open your code first. Um, it's a WPF app. Okay, so there's data. Uh, there's a clear separation for the data. Mm -hmm. And then there's the WCF app, which I haven't really uh, you know, used it much, except the data, pla uh, uh, data layer, uh, uh, because I just op uh, put it into mobile apps, right? Okay. And then there's the WPF app. So <clears throat> now how do you know which all these uh, things are really portable, right? Um, well, clearly, everything that is not a view and not platform dependent, it's portable. That's clearly, it's easy to understand that. 
But there is an amazing uh, tool called uh, .NET Portability Analyzer, mm -hmm. um, which you can actually download from this website um, uh, in the Visual Studio extensions. Yep. You can download this and go, uh, once it gets installed, you will have that in your, <coughs> in your Visual Studio. So you can just say analyze portability, project portability, and uh, yes, I want to stop debugging. And we'll see how. Right, because this app is written on full .NET framework, probably four or five, might even be earlier than that. I'm oh, just yeah. losing track of time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to run it on uh, Xamarin, you want to target .NET standards. Yep. So you need to know um, if there's code in there that isn't supported in yeah. standard and therefore won't run yep. on um, in Xamarin apps, correct? Right. Yes, we need to know what exactly doesn't run. Right. So, um, so I can just open this. Uh, it, this basically gives you a report in different HTMLs and Excel, Excel, uh, Excel format and things. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for us to, to, uh, for now to take a look at it uh, this way. So we'll just open the Excel sheet. Um, so one thing to understand is this is going to give you a fair estimate of what your project uh, work is going to be looking like. Mm -hmm. So you can see that um, so for .NET standards, it's ready up to 68%. And for Xamarin Android, it's around 79.17%. This says that of the code in of WPF. the code in WPF, WPF. of no. that code, yeah. sixty-eight percent yeah. um, would be found in .NET standard, yeah. and close to eighty percent of it would run on Android and iOS. On Android and iOS, yeah. okay. So I did not. Uh, so is that is that a dauntingly low number, or is that good? Um, it's it's a good number because okay. if you look at the WPF app, I mean, if you go to the details. All the things that is available here, they are all UI related. Right? Okay. There are message box, there's grid, you would use data grids, um, and all the kind of things, right? So, I mean, it's those are not anyway supported. Right. So we need to write. And you wouldn't them. be reusing them anyway because yeah. you'd be writing this in, in yeah. uh, Xamarin Forms XAML. Right. right. Which I mean, XAML is XAML, yes, but they're not yeah. literally the same. Right. And you also had a data uh, uh, layer there, right? right? So that would have much better um, thing. Uh, yep. We can just go ahead and look at that too. Um, I would predict that'd be that would should be close to a hundred. But let's find out. Oh, let's find out. Oh, um, we're not opening the same report. How do you know which one it is? Mm, let me open the data. Let me clear this place. So that it's easier to. Oh, it's seven and eight. Yeah, so it's, that's gone away. Um, we can just start off here. So we'll do the portable analyze this project. Oops, not the settings. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, okay, so I think we'll go with the number, uh, maybe the eight. The eight uh, oh, it, it won't be the number because, yeah, it should be this one. Okay, that needs a clearing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can see that. Woohoo! That's All right. 100%. Cool. Right. Yeah, because yeah, there shouldn't have been anything <coughs> in the data yeah. um, that wasn't. Because we, we we wrote it fairly standard, there, so there you wouldn't expect anything in there that didn't move along. Right. Okay. Right. Good. So this is a good <coughs> good estimate for us to know what's the kind of work that's mm -hmm. uh, ahead of us. Um, now uh, we will start porting that. So the easier way to do that is to uh, create a new app, file new Xamarin Forms app. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just do this uh, file new project. Um, oops. Let's go to a one which doesn't have. So we do file new project and open um, cross platform. Choose a mobile app and then go next, um, and you will be thrown in a view with you know. Yep. Are you starting with a blank app or a master digital? I'll always choose a master digital because we do have multiple pages, okay. um, so it will give us an easy uh, tab uh, view. Um, and uh, are yeah, you a so shared project <laughs> or a .NET standard yeah. guy? Um, I I don't know. I I mean I started uh, doing Xamarin much before. The .NET standard came in, so I was more a shared project guy because I was not choosing PCL much. Okay. Uh, but then I continued to use that. But .NET standard is, uh, also is better. Uh, okay. it's, I mean, it's a choice, <coughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, uh, so I chose uh, the shared project and then click OK. So if you want a backend, you can just include an Azure back backend. Which like you well. did. So <laughs> yeah. in this point, would it be easier to create it yourself or to check that and let Visual Studio spin it up for you? Um, you can check that and create a basic project, and then you can dump in your code and then wire okay. it up in the right way. That would okay. be the right way to do it. So, um, so I'm going to know this right now. Go back to the My Expenses app. OK, this is my app, which has the shared project. Mm -hmm. um, so all the um, things that I have ported from your project, including um, some of the view models. I mean, this is this is the most beautiful thing. I mean, you can port an application from WinForms too. Right. right. But WPF, you have view models, which are clear separation from the user, log user yes. uh, views, right? So yeah, uh, so you can take that. So I also retained the view models like as a legacy view model. And I also wrote okay. a couple of other view models. I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, WPF has a large view with a large real estate, so view models work for the entire the view model, the right, entire view, right? So mm -hmm. it is having uh, ribbon-related tasks, it is having the other ones. So I had to split up. So what I did is I created new view models mm -hmm. and reused those view models that was already there. Okay. You can completely rewrite it if you want to. Uh, it's just technically moving the codes around. But to, just to show that, you know, hey, I'm not touching this code at all, so I went with this approach to keeping the legacy code as is. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, created view model separately for each uh, pages. Right? Okay. So um, yeah, you have the app dots, uh, apps uh, dot XAML page, which is the starting point of it, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I go into the main page, uh, which um, um, where where I'm setting the tabs and that kind of things. Okay. So you can see that this is my uh, endpoint Azure Mobile App URL. Yep. Yeah, that's where all the data is coming from. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, that was pretty easy to do that. So, All right. Yeah. Is there anything else? Um, so yeah. let's take a look at some of the views. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> These you had to basically redo from scratch? Oh, uh, yeah. All the views are written from scratch. So right. <clears throat> um, you can you can't really use There's these no WPF real XAML. Good converters no. out there, right? Not yet. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in future. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So as of now, no, and um, uh, but it's it's fairly easy to do it. Um, but lab I mean, you've got labels, you've got yeah. text boxes. I mean, things yeah. are called a little bit differently. Yeah. You know, stack layout versus stack panel, mm. uh, text box versus entry. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out yeah. the basic things. Um, so it's it's not that hard to to figure out how to yeah. do a relatively straightforward it's, yeah, page. It's um, and then obviously, if you want to do the harder stuff. You know, there's learning involved, but mm -hmm. to to get to at least a first pass on it. Yep. I mean, it's again, it's XAML. It's XAML. So if you if you are familiarized with WPF, mm -hmm. you'll just pick it up real quick. Yeah. It's very straightforward. Like maybe this stack panel, it's stack layout, but the rest of the things remains the right. same. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have the views here, and uh, it's clearly separated with view models and um, uh, services, helpers. Um, there's a ton of code that has been reused. And um, I don't have much of the code written in Android, iOS, and UWP because everything that I've taken it from the uh, expenses app from WPF, it's all in the shared project. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how did you, what did you do with the, the service, the WCF service? Yeah. How did you get that to be a mobile app? So what it did is uh, that's on a different project. Uh, I could have just added here. Uh, but I'll just explain that. So you have the data layer, which had everything doing it. It had a repository service and things, mm -hmm. right? So you had a repository service. So what I could do is I could have the Azure mobile app endpoint with these pages, like charge, expenses, and other things. And when they got the request, I used to remodel that request uh, directly into the, your repository service and use, reuse the, reg the regular methods that you were using already. So it's a, it's a separate project type, yeah, right? It's a, yeah. Can, it's you, a, yeah. can you bring that up? Let's see yeah, that. we can do that. And how do you... Just show us in the new project where you would, how you would start with that. Yep. Um, so this is the uh, mobile app service uh, backend project. Mm -hmm. um, so it has the models, uh, data. Um, uh, so you have these data objects that you already had, like charge, okay. employee, yeah. and things. So I'm reusing that here. And uh, then there are controllers. Um, which is going to receive your requests, the ones which are coming in, like charge controller, mm -hmm. uh, employee controller, expenses report controller. So I created the endpoint, and it is basically winding up um, uh, behind the scenes uh, to the So data. how much of the, did you get to do all of this in Visual Studio? Did you have to go into Azure and create the? 
yeah. uh, mobile app first. I could do everything in Visual Studio uh, because um, you, when you create a new project, right, uh, you create an so add. Let, let's see that. Go to, mm -hmm. new, go to File New Project and show us where that is. The, oh, you mean the backend? Yeah. So, okay, uh, the backend, what, it, what I did, uh, I had it on a different project. So when, I, when we created a file new project, there was something called include mobile backend. Okay. So I enabled that, so that would ah, give me the okay. project type, then added Azure Mobile Apps related, uh, you know, new gets, okay. and then I started from there. Oh, I, yeah. okay. So you let Visual Studio do that part yeah. for you. It spun that up on Azure, it yeah. created that in Azure, mm -hmm. um, and then you took the code from the WCF service, because yeah. the way you talk to the database stays the same, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's... Um, it's the models mainly. The I, models, yeah, okay. Models, which and I then the code for talking to the database, was that, was that reused from the service? No, because uh, I was okay. using, a, there was a direct connection with the, it is using an entity framework to connect to the SQL database, okay. so I just reused the same thing. Okay. So what I did is I took the models and uh, attached it to uh, the endpoints. Mm -hmm so that that will receive all the data and then it was straightforward safe. Okay. Uh, this mainly I did it to, you know, make use of the offline sync capabilities. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what was the, what were some of the hardest parts of this? If, if someone was going to do this, what's your mm. advice on where they can expect it to take a while and where they can expect yep. it to just be easy? Yeah, I mean, first thing is to don't easy. expect... Uh, <laughs> Straightforward. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate using the word easy. Yeah. Straightforward. Straightforward way, yeah. Um, the first thing is to have a mobile mindset. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at portability, uh, trying to port the code, don't look at, uh, I'm going to reuse the entire thing and try to fit in there. I mean, uh, it's a good part. It's a good thing that you can reuse a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it's also important to see being creative and uh, you know, don't look for a magic wand which is going to just convert everything for you and then give you an app because that would like you know waste your creativity in that. Right. right? So you should look at code that can be ported and then uh, look at building uh, mobile uh, apps in, in a way um, it is meant to be built. Like follow the design principle. There's documentation on uh, Xamarin side. Um, uh, there is enough uh, documentation on how do you understand iOS versus Android platform differences. So go through those things mm -hmm. and then keep those mobile mindset in mind. Um, then it will be easy for you to port any okay. code. Um, if you're looking for a magic band, um, that's not a straightforward way. And it, you will find it really hard to port it because right. you're always thinking about uh, taking the code directly and you know, baking in. You always have to think, okay, let me take this code and how do, you, how do I make it better on mobile platforms, mm -hmm. right? And yep. reuse them. Yeah. Right. And in terms of learning hmm. uh, what a good UI is, I think the best recommendation is go look at a bunch of existing apps. Yeah, absolutely. Go look at, in this case, go look at expense report apps. There's yep. probably a thousand of them out there. Yeah, exactly. Go look at them and yeah. see what they did yep. and uh, adopt techniques that you like. Yes. Um, adjust techniques that you think are yep. kind of there and, yep. and don't make it look like the WPF app. <laughs> exactly. So this is what I did. Right. I'm not a designer myself, so yeah. my app may not be the best in design, but what I did is like I looked at the other expenses app, how are they mm -hmm. built. Um, and, and use the same uh, principles to just uh, build the app for this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. So this code is is out there on GitHub. Oh, um, it is. Yes. We'll uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, as well as to the blog post. And yep. so basically, it's a WPF app. So you know XAML. You know mm -hmm. C sharp. Mm -hmm. You basically know what you need to know to start down the path of building yep. mobile apps with Xamarin because Xamarin Forms is based on XAML and C Sharp. Yeah. Um, yes, as we, we said a couple times, you got to learn the paradigm. You have to learn the mobile environment. Yes. Um, but in terms of the code, uh, huge amounts of your code are totally reusable. Absolutely. Yep. And, okay. and this is kind of a, a good way to, to start down this path. And, and again, we're not getting rid of the WPF app. It's still potentially the main way people yep. enter expenses or do whatever it is they're doing. It's a right. lot of business app, which means it's running the business. Mm -hmm. But you have the ability to add mobile uh, front ends to it so yes. that people can, as you said, do their expenses when not at the office. Right. Um, you know, you're at the kid's soccer game and mm -hmm. you remember that you didn't approve expense reports, wouldn't it be cool to be able to take yeah. out your phone and go, oh, approve, yeah. approve, approve, reject. Yep. And in that sense, 
I'm caring a little bit less about the UI. Yep. It, it needs to be usable. It, it can't be horribly ugly. Yep. But it doesn't have to be a five-star app. <laughs> yeah. If I can take out my phone, authenticate, mm -hmm. approve expense reports, put it yep. back in my pocket yep. um, while I'm watching the kids play soccer or standing in line at the grocery store. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of value that you can bring to yeah. the app at your company yeah. without ever having to even talk about tossing out the code right. you already have. That's true. That's right. Yeah. Right. Uh, most importantly, keep mobile mindset when you're, whenever yep. you're porting the apps. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks for coming on and doing this. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for having me, Robert. Hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.